you can't learn how to deal with life if your mom is always saying, okay, wait, 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 kids, you're going to be Barbie, and then you'll be Skipper, right. and then you'll be Skipper, and she'll be Barbie. And it's like, so you, you don't trust kids, and you're enslaving the parents. It's weird. Lenore Skenazy has a radical suggestion for parents. Just leave your kids alone. She's the mother of free-range parenting, this idea that kids need ample time away from the watchful eyes of parents to properly develop, that they need to be free to have their own adventures, complete with uh, scraped knees and bruised egos. Don't schedule every minute with enriching activities. If you do, you might end up raising a neurotic drone. I recently sat down with Lenore to discuss the uh, evils of trunk retreat and the glory in letting a nine-year-old ride his bike across the Brooklyn Bridge all alone. Let's start with that. What is that? What do you have? I'm a subscriber to Parents Magazine because my own kids are old and I wonder what's going on in the culture. And this back to school issue, I turn down the pages that drive me crazy. Look at this. It tells you to get on the floor with them, um, let them raid the linen closet for blankets and sheets, then work together to construct an indoor hideaway. The idea that you have to be building a fort with your kid, that you're going to help them, that they're clueless, that it should be better than the one that they were going to build, that they couldn't come up creatively with a good enough idea, that you can't be in the kitchen making spaghetti while they're building, you have to be involved, that's a lie. Children have an innate curiosity, an innate desire to make things happen and do things. And if we're always with them, doing it with them and helping them and suggesting, it's, it's taking away their actual childhood and saying, hey, I can do it better. Let's build the fort this way. It's like, no, let them build the fort a crappy way. It's a fort. It's made out of pillows. It doesn't have to withstand, you know, shell fire. Just let them do it. If that magazine's first issue was the uh, psychological technology embedded within the human child is magnificent and glorious <laughs> and if left to its own devices will use its surrounding environment organically to build a person and build and build these uh, essential you mental know, tools. Would be like, I don't need this. Right, and like, <laughs> then what's the next issue about? <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. it's like see first issue. Lenore thinks that a culture that fetishizes safety actually robs kids of the opportunity to practice self-reliance. This kind of book, though, is the purest distillation of the um, technocratic management class, where they uh, have an undue hubris in terms of their ability to micromanage and control positive right, outcomes, right, right? Right, right? So they think they can do that with credit-backed derivatives, they think they can <laughs> do that with COVID, and they think they can do that with their kids. And for each one of those examples, their arrogance ends up having catastrophic unintended consequences in terms of messing with kind of organic processes that have a deeper wisdom to them than you can even appreciate, right? Or you can even fully understand. But I guess yeah, the idea is that like children <laughs> and won't- And they make you put their sandwiches in the shape of a ship, right? <laughs> There's that <laughs> right. <awesome. laughs> Safety is on the minds of local parents who took their kids trunk or treating today. Handing out the candy from their trunks, it's a great way to engage with the community without the risks. On Halloween, a lot of places are now saying, don't trick or treat, we have a safe alternative even though trick-or-treating is really safe. We're going to have trunk or treat. Do you know trunk or treat? Okay, so all these trunks are open and, and crazily you're encouraging your child to go to anybody who says, I have a trunk full of candy. <laughs> Great, yeah, that'll make kids safer. And anyway, so they go from trunk to trunk to trunk and the idea is they get a lot of candy. So that's all that matters, right? But that's not all that matters. Halloween is getting up the guts to knock on the scary door and figuring out who has the best candy and uh, you know tripping over your costume and meeting people and seeing different houses and getting to know your neighborhood and being out at night and not being with your parents. It's all this practice for the excitement and the cold calling of adulthood. And we've replaced it with, well, they're getting candy. Isn't that enough? Candy without the struggle. That's a recipe for psychological frailty. And worse yet, some states are now effectively mandating that fragility with excessive child protection laws. 
Well, in Virginia, where you live, there are local laws in some of the localities, some of the districts that say a child of eight is not allowed to be alone in the house, on the street, or in their yard. So if you're talking about a culture that is undermining children, what they want to do, what they can do, who they are, and what they're ready for, that's our culture. Say you're a parent and you want your kid to walk home from school, yeah. but the school won't let them self-release, which is it's like, it's like <laughs> gnawing off your own arm to get out of school, like no, no, no. But um, you want your kid to wait at the bus stop, but nobody else is doing that. You want your kid to just play after school, but everybody's in soccer or Kumon. I mean, there's right. a real um, iron dome of excessive child focus and structure. So if you're worrying about what is happening to older kids today and young adults who are waiting for instructions and are frustrated and confused because you didn't tell them exactly what to do, well, all we've done for 18 years or 25 years until then is tell them exactly what to do. They lived in an autocratic state where things were optimized to perfection and now we're saying, why aren't you guys being entrepreneurs? Hey, take risks. They haven't been allowed to take a single risk. Like what we've been able to accomplish here in America is remarkable, right? Mm -hmm. This level of prosperity, this level of peace, this level of opportunity. Safety. This all really gets thrown into relief when, I don't mean to get too dour, but like what's happening in Afghanistan, right? There is like, like <laughs> failed states, right? But yes. <laughs> when you see what's happening there and you see vicious tribal warfare, it's basically like, who do we want to be in charge? The vicious, regressive tribal warlords or the seventh century religious reactionaries. Like those are the options you have in terms of <laughs> who's gonna populate the administrative agencies of Kabul, right? It reminds you that what we just take for granted right. is actually like an incredible right. historical miracle. You got a couple hundred thousand years of homo sapiens being on earth. Mm -hmm. What we've been able Eating to achieve grubs. here, mm -hmm. right, represents a, a microscopically small slice of history, right. right? And so my kids, they, they're being born into a civilization that, uh, that affords them like astonishing opportunity, right? And astonishing amounts of freedom for them to try to do something, well, some, something very cool with their lives. And I see most of their other age cohort not taking advantage of those because of, I guess I wanna call it a, a self-shackling where I just see these like 17 year olds on Instagram posting incessantly about their like Lyme disease. This, you're not gonna like, I don't, you're not gonna, I don't know if we were gonna I include I didn't know the, we were gonna go from cobble to Lyme disease but just, on Instagram. Just these, these 17 year olds, like if you get to be a 17 year old in America, you have insane amounts of opportunity and you're not gonna, you're not gonna grasp it because of Lyme disease. a certain <laughs> kind of self shackling that I think has its origins in this kind of parenting. I mean, I, I've, I've clearly the Rob Mont's approved comprehensive thesis <laughs> is still in beta testing. There's a Wordsworth poem that inspired me, which is the child is father to the man. And that means that your, your childhood, you're, you're, you're a child before you are an adult. So it's this oldest part of you. And if you find your way to something that really interests you, it is quite possible that there's a through line. I was looking at out there, if you guys focus, in Buzz Aldrin's autobiography, he talks about when he was 10, he lived in New Jersey, and he hopped on his bike and he rode across the George Washington Bridge, which is scary high, right, into Manhattan. And then he just started riding his bike up and down all these streets in Washington Heights. And he rode back and he said, I felt like there was no stopping me. And I felt like that's, that's who he was. He was the kid who had to discover. He was even high up, right? right? He went on his own in a vehicle to a new place. He discovered it himself. He wasn't scared. He was exhilarated and his parents let him. He was 10 years old. I had like 90 seconds once with this businessman. And I said, what did you do as a kid? that you still see yourself doing, something you just loved doing as a kid. And he said, nothing. I was like, all right, let's try this again. <laughs> what did you do as a kid that you loved doing that you still are sort of doing? He said, well, you know, I played. I was like, played like what? What? And he said, well, actually, he grew up in Miami 
fruit trees all over the place. Fruit falls onto the sidewalk. So he picked up the fruit, which is other people's fruit, but it wasn't theirs because it was on the sidewalk. And he put it into a little wagon and then he went around selling it. And that man is Jeff Bezos. <laughs> and he still does. He still goes around selling other people's stuff. Lenore made a brief foray into reality TV as a sort of free-range parent whisperer for neurotic moms and dads. And the experience left her unexpectedly hopeful. There was one kid who was 10 years old. She fed him in his mouth. She wouldn't let him pour milk. She wouldn't let him drink milk because of phlegm. She wouldn't let him pour juice. She wouldn't let him obviously walk to school, ride a bike, go on an overnight, do anything. Bike riding was the second day of my um, experiment with them. And you know, the mom was like screaming, no, no, but he's riding the bike and he's falling and then he's wobbling around and he's forgetting to use both feet. But finally, he could make it like from one side of the empty parking lot to the other. And when the mom came home, it, the parents were like, yes, look at that. But when you do make the kid do something on their own, because it's a TV show or because it's a, the Let Grow Project in schools or because you think it's good, it's, it's so easy to shatter that fear. I mean, that's what I couldn't believe. This fear that had kept a mother feeding her 10-year-old in his mouth with a spoon, and then he's going to BMX bike camp after four days of him doing little things on his own.